All right, last video. Mr. Ahmed here. We are going to talk about histograms. And a histogram is a data plot that shows the frequency of a set of data. So that, the frequency really means just how often that something is occurring. And the first thing we're gonna just take a, do is take a look at an example here. And uh, it tells us that the frequency table and histogram display the number of raffle tickets sold by students in your grade. So we're breaking this data apart into how many sold between one and eight, apparently five sold between one and eight, nine sold between nine and 16, uh, 16 sold between 17 and 24, uh, between 25 and 32, we had 25, etc. Now, as we look at this uh, way that the data is aligned, we had one through eight, and then nine to 16, and each time it's going up by eight. All right, each time it's going up by eight. So when we uh, take a look here, it needs to be an even distribution as it's going up by eight, going up by eight, going up by eight. And we can take a look at the graph and see that, well, most of the students, the most, 25, sold between 25 and 32 tickets. So that's probably pretty solid. We had a couple students that sold between 49 and 56 and a few that didn't sell very many between one and eight. So that is a histogram. And when you are choosing the best way to find the means of the center, uh, if the data looks like a normal bell curve, kind of evened out, it's not skewed to the left or to the right, uh, we can just take the mean. If the data is skewed, in this case, the data is skewed left, so we would probably use the median to find the means of center and et cetera, if the data is skewed to the right, we would also use the median to find the best means of the center. So really all we're gonna do is look at the couple histograms, analyze the data, and also draw our own. So moving on to our next page, we are told that a grocery store caches checks for customers, and it tells us the amounts cash for one week are shown in the table. So. Uh, we had quite a few amounts of checks. Uh, we had some at $65, $100, $15, $140. Um, and we need to choose our frequency in which that we are going to go up by. Now, I decided to go up since I have to get all the way up to 140. I had a low value of five. That means I really need to be between zero and 150. So I'm gonna go up by 25s. So I'm gonna go from one to 25. And the next one would be 26 to 50, and then if I'm going up by 25s, I'd have 75, and then 100, and 125, and 150. So each time I'm going up by 25 units, okay? So one to 25. Now, I had to go up by one because 25 is included here, so I have 26 to 50. So over here, 51 to 75, 76 to 100, 101 to 125 and 126 to 150. So we're gonna figure out how many checks were between one and $25. We have to look at the data to see between one and 25. I count one, two, three. Only saw three the first time. Let's double check that between one and 25. One, two, three. Four, so five. Uh, you're gonna have to be pretty careful as you're looking at the data to see those. So I have five that are between one and 25. I had the uh, one, two, three, four, and here's this 25 for a total of five. So when you're kind of going through those, you're gonna have to be pretty careful as you're counting these up. Take your time, cross them off as you go so you don't count one more than once. Now from 26 to 50, there are 10. Uh, between 51 and 75, there are nine, and then two, one, and one. So I kind of did that ahead of time, just because it would take a little bit of time for me to do it. And now we're going to answer the questions. So it says, display the data using six intervals between one and 25, which we've kind of already taken care of. And then which measure of center best represents the data? For us to do that, first we need to plot our histogram. So, uh, my frequency. Uh, the highest value is 10, so I'm going to go from 1 to 10 by 1s on my graph. So 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now my first frequency was between one and 25. So this goes from, I'm gonna turn my paper sideways so it's easier for me to see this, one to 25. And then I had 26 to 50, 51 to 75, 76 to 100, 101 to 125, 126 to 150. All right, so I'm gonna plot how many times that it occurred. So between one and 25, I had five, so my bar goes up to the five and straight down. Between 26 and 50, I was all the way up at 10, so that would go all the way up to my 10 to here, over, and down. Between 51 and 75, I had nine, so I'm at nine. And then draw my bar graph down. Uh, between 120, or sorry, between 76 and 100, we were at two. So that's really low here. And then between 101 and 125, we were at one and one. So when I take a look at this, uh, most of the data is here to the left. So it is actually skewed to the right. Which measure would best be used to show the data? We would want to use the median because it is skewed right. Data is skewed right. Uh, this kind of went back to which direction it was skewed to last week. Keep in mind it's kind of opposite with these graphs. If more of the data is to the left, it's actually skewed to the right. If more of the data is to the right, it's actually skewed to the left. So kind of backwards. And lastly, it says the grocery store charges a fee for cashing checks that are greater than $75. How would you interpret those results? Well, I would say that not many people cashed a check over $75, so they didn't want to pay a fee. Might be a possibility. Or the other possibility is if they had a huge check, they probably just went to the bank. But I'm going to guess most customers didn't want to pay the fee. To pay the fee. So uh, that wraps up our uh, notes for actually the whole school year. We are done. Histograms is it. Uh, hopefully you have a great summer and we will catch you all later.